This is a truly historic moment in the history of this building. To have one community come together from across all corners of the country to tell a story we believe in deeply as an act of radical togetherness, creativity and connection feels like an extremely important and privileging thing to be doing. Thank you for making everyone realise what is possible. Strap on your courage, pick up your sword, say your farewells and push out to shore. I have a, a love for football, a love for horse racing, a love for rugby, but theatre, no quite in my category, no. I didn't know what to expect, like I just jumped in and I remember asking Philip on the first day, like Philip I'm not going to lie to you, I don't really think I'm acting or something, he's like yeah you are, you're acting up, yeah you are, <laughs> so I, was, I, was, I was like alright cool but I, like, I don't know how to do this. I've never done anything like this before which makes it Special because I've never done anything like on such a massive scale. No pressure at all. No problem. We're exactly where we should be, yes. doing exactly yes, what we should yes. be doing right now. I think being on the stage is actually our protest. Just don't throw up and faint. I don't know how it happened though, Raf. How did this happen? What, what happened? I don't know. Why, how are we at the international <laughs> It feels like a revolution, and I know that's dramatic, but it absolutely does. So imagine that the bulk of us aren't professionals, and we've come this far. It's meant a whole lot for me, and I know the other company members too. Odyssey to the Odyssey, well, um, we're all members of Tribe House. I was at college during a performing arts course. I used to volunteer in a youth club. My story before the Odyssey began down at the recovery service. I was in recovery for alcohol addiction. They called me up and asked, hey, there's a community cast that has been put together for a company. Are you and your daughter interested? I'm like, of course. And I came along to Fenton Town Hall, out of curiosity, out of politeness had absolutely no intention whatsoever of getting involved. And I just got swept away and went to the National to do a workshop and came back from that just feeling the most empowered that I've ever felt in my life and thought I could take the lead in any West End show. Public Acts is in many ways the heartbeat of the building. The way that everybody comes together with that common purpose is truly life-giving. And the impact that it has on the people coming in and the people who work here is utterly unique. Public Acts is the National Theatre's community programme. We exist to make big, ambitious, radically inclusive pieces of theatre that are an act of community building. And we do that by working in long-term partnership with social change, community organisations and theatre organisations across the country. Do you think it's real? I don't believe it. It could be a mistake or a trick. We don't know anything. Get the Queen, we need answers. We knew that 2023 was going to be the fifth anniversary of the project and we wanted to create something more wild, more ambitious, more exciting than we'd ever done before. So we started thinking about a story that could travel around the country. And we settled on the Odyssey 
We loved it for its big themes of resilience, of loss, of homecoming. Telemachus! Watch where you're going! Put the tide turning out! What you got there? It's not for you, it's for my mummy. Show me! I'm sending her a map to get her home. A map? Hmm. I know you can draw a line. We decided to tell the story in five episodes with professional artists and communities around the country. We started with episode one in Stoke-on-Trent with Rhys Stokes' production of The Lotus Eaters. Then we travelled over to Cars Theatre in Doncaster for The Cyclops. Episode three, The Four Winds, was created in Trowbridge Town Hall down in Wiltshire. And then we travelled all the way back up to Sunderland for The Island of the Sun, produced with Sunderland Culture and the Sunderland Empire. And then the fifth and final part of the story, The Underworld, was told back here at the National Theatre with a cross-country community made up of people from all those different places, plus community members from London, including those from Queen's Theatre Hornchurch and the brilliant Tribe House Theatre. One, two, and three, six, seven, there is nothing! There is nothing. Tribe House Theatre is a theatre company that works with young black men between the ages of 16 to 25, offering theatre as a supportive outlet. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's that. I think the power of theatre is that it's all about story. And I think something else that's really important is when you're talking about theatre, you're talking about play. There's obviously the level of performance, which is great, but it's really a process to discover and unravel and let your thoughts go. Whether you're becoming another character for a moment, whether you're having to think critically or creatively for an idea, these are really useful skills for life. Like this, right hand coming towards you process is at the forefront, yes, there's going to be an amazing show at the end, but there's a lot of energy and a lot of focus into what's happening in that room, how are that company feeling, how is that group blending together. I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a nice I've been pulling you tight, Yeah, I know, which is what I wanted to ask. For me, what surprised me, like, yeah, fear is always trying to have a diverse fear group, but this takes diversity to, it's everyone. This actually is diverse. It's unheard of. You don't hear about community work fitters that are looking at every community and making sure that your ideas are heard, that you are valued, that you are safe, that you are respected. It makes me feel safe when I'm performing. And it makes me feel that what I'm doing actually matters, you know. You must know what they mean. For me, the process of trying to create something that had not only professional actors, but people who were from the community, performance community, for me, I don't ever want to do anything else. It's reinstilled my faith in the fact that the arts and theatre in particular is for everyone and it should therefore have not only just everyone watching but everyone within it as well. This is what theatres should be doing. They should be representing their communities. Our audiences should be seeing themselves reflected on stage. They should find their stories on stage because then everybody feels that they've got a stake in, in art. Stoke always works with like, autobiographical storytelling, so our shows always involve people's real lived experiences. We kind of really worked with people to look where the story met their stories. And then our writer, Gabriella, supported other people to write their own words and kind of wove that all together in this like, kind of beautiful tapestry. I can't believe how close we are to having a show. And that's because of you guys and all everything you've put into it. And I loved hearing your stories, I love seeing What made videos. me curious, um, let me first say that people who have been in addiction carry an inferior complex that nobody likes them. And they can only mix with their own kind of people, other addicts. I thought I was invincible then. Even invisible at times. The fact that they accepted me, even, you know, where I come from. Being accepted by these people after a few meetings was a big thing for me.
welcome everybody. If we just take a little moment to look around the entire company and to know that we are in this together and every person in this room is so special. We're going to keep pulling that together and we're going to create this amazing experience of the Odyssey in Donny yes. for our audience. Yes. Yes. There's one thing that hopefully we need to do. We are going to sing Happy Birthday. Oh, yeah. because I mean, don't, because I hate the attention. <laughs> <laughs> This is a story that's got a darkness to it. I've grown up in what would be the post-industrial north, and that became a really strong element behind this adaptation. It was about how we build communities after particular industries have gone. You watch the workers all the time. I feel like I'm absolutely living a dream. When I was at school, drama was my everyday in drama all the time, but then life got in the way. I've got three children, two with special needs, so everything took over, and then I can't believe it's come back into my life when I'm 50. We've got quite a lot to get through today. If anything happens that means that um, an entrance goes wrong or we don't quite know where we're standing or whatever, just carry on going. And just all the same energy that you had yesterday, I cannot wait to see everybody on stage like this in there. So if everyone wants to get into their position... It's been very fun getting involved. We each have like different abilities that we can do and different things that we can like bring. Like people accept it and they're so nice about it. I don't feel like there's any negative energy around being yourself, I guess. Okay, stand by and say please for everybody out. And um, I think public action happen in every, every town. <laughs> I don't know whether that would be possible yet, but definitely I think it's been really powerful for a lot of people. We don't often think about Trowbridge as being a particularly creative town. We don't even have a theatre space. And I think this has showed that actually there are some really incredible people in this town who deserve to be listened to and given that voice. Really, really lovely tone. Let's go. Well, it's for your house out. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Sarah, do wait, you want to get your shoes wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> I just needed to get across. <laughs> I moved over to the UK and Sunderland over a year ago uh, from Nigeria. Time to go. Time to go. Everything is brand new. It's like learning to walk again. And you're not just learning to walk again, you're learning to look again, you're learning to see again, you're learning to talk again. So that's a, bit, a good way to look at what it means to actually move and you know nobody. And you're not even sure if they want to around. <laughs> so it has to stay with you. That's why I like the story of uh, Odysseus and the way it's been portrayed here. This is a story of just so many different people, and I see that reflected in us. <laughs> For me, what's really exciting about this Public Acts project and what National Theatre is doing is thinking about what does it mean to be a National Theatre. I am a massive believer in the strength of the artists who are based in Sunderland and in the North East. Nobody in Sunderland or Stoke or Doncaster is waiting for somebody to tell them how to make theatre, but they are waiting for opportunity. And I think that coming together through this programme 
is is really special. connect all the episodes and communities around the country, we built Odysseus a ship called the Galley that journeyed alongside the productions, collecting messages of remembrance for lost loved ones. After the last performance of each episode, the Galley transformed into the stage of a closing ceremony to pass the baton of the storytelling forward onto the next company. We are here to mark the end of this phase of the project, to celebrate all of the companies from around the country who have got us here. Tonight, the ship will leave and begin the next stage of its journey towards the National Theatre in London, where episode five, The Underworld, will be staged this August. The creative team from episode five travelled up and down the country and recruited 11 people from each of those companies to come and be part of episode five here at the National Theatre. So people would come together as one nationwide community on the National Theatre's Olivier stage. And that has never been done before. And we had to start from scratch and figuring out how to make it happen. and also Odysseus is appearing at the back. So it's also whether they're doing anything in relation to... If you sing the A, Dan, I'll sing the B. Tell us something. Tell us, something. Tell us anything. Sorry, well, this is the last day of our Partner Associates residency. So we've run through all the different choreographic sequences, learned all the music. We're doing a final pass through the show to make sure everybody understands their entrances and exits and all the different stage pictures so that they're now ready to go back to their companies and in like three weeks time start rehearsing. Because of the nature of the process in which we have five rehearsal rooms all around the country, all rehearsing simultaneously, all of the choreographic material had to be set before rehearsal started, which isn't normally how I work. It feels a little bit like you're in the dark just hoping you've picked the right choices. So yeah, it's, uh, that, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge, <laughs> yeah, a great challenge. Utterly exhausting, utterly bonkers, but um, uh, yeah, one of the most rewarding things I've done in my life, yeah. I'm getting more confused. <laughs> Do you want to do it again? Just that yeah. again. What's that famous saying about before the light there is the darkness or something? <laughs> what is it? This, this is the joy of going through I just wanted to start by acknowledging the extraordinary work that has happened to this point. I said to our London company on day one, and I want to say it again now, this experience is not our gift to you. This show we're going to make, this show that you're going to perform and own, is going to be amazing, and it is going to be your gift to us, and your gift to the world. And it's definitely going to be joyful, and it's definitely going to be hard, so here, I just want to land the spirit of community and I want to bring in the spirit of hard work. We're in it together. We're here with you. Are we ready? Rosalind is so ready. Are we ready? Yeah. OK, let's have a big round of applause for that, for that spirit.
social qualities on those cutoffs. Dionysus brings fun. When you're in movement mode, I think the instinct is want to hold those notes a lot longer. Yes. But just to make sure we get the end of those words so it doesn't sound like Dionysus brings fun. So we just want to <laughs> put that in and that will be great. I'm just having a moment as well and like partner associates and everybody, I'm really looking at you here. I, I just didn't know, I didn't know, I kind of thought it was possible to make a show like this. We are making a show like this. We have made a show in five different places all across the country. We're doing it. Can I just love that? We're doing it. We've done it. Can we just like our partner associates, can we just give them the biggest amount of love? Oh my goodness. And, um, oh, wow, we're doing it. You are all absolutely amazing. Okay, let's do Kaylee positions before lunch. Is that okay? So, um, there's a bit of a... In addition to the community company of about 120 people, we had six fantastic, fantastic professional actors a band of six amazing professional musicians and then we had four inspirational cameo groups to do one discrete part of the show so we had the London Balron Band who are an amazing group of Irish Balron players Impact Dance who are a young people's art for social change dance company Haringey Vox Youth Choir which is an inclusive choir for young people and the South Wales Gay Men's Chorus which is a community-based choir from Cardiff I've shown you my new present that I've got today, which says eat, sleep, audition, rehearse, rehearse, freak out, kill it on opening night, repeat. I am currently at the freak out stage of our process, <laughs> but I'm sure my lovely team will support me. I'm feeling very nervous because I'm sitting there with a lot of people that like gonna be there, like watching us, but I'm also feeling very very excited. It, it is, it's, it's a nerve-wracking moment, definitely. Um, we all fiercely believe in this thing and everyone is doing such amazing work and I feel like it's my job now to not screw it up to, and to bring the whole thing together, like the, the, the kind of cooking of everything, the drawing together of all of these different tributaries of work. And this work is at risk all across the country, all across, you know, within the industry, um, community focused work and work that is seeking to put social change and social impact and participation first is work that you have to fight for. When you engage with that, it's quite, um, that is scary and it is very emotional. The work is very emotional, it's very emotional, yeah. Yeah, nervous, nervous, obviously, but um, I'm sure we'll get enough encouragement to, it'll be done, we'll do it, we'll do it. And I think over the next 10 days, we're just going to rehearse, 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 so it's just going to get better. I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong right now that would make me anxious. I wonder what the directors would say. So all that's going to happen is I'm going to rock up on stage and sing and act my little heart out probably stood in the wrong place. Brilliant, so good. And now we're just going to drill it for lines, so just really pacey lines. You got it, just keep running it. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. There's a big gap there. Hang on, I missed it. I don't know what's going on there. We've not got half of Trowbridge. So that got a bit trafficy here, didn't it? Haiti. And so they need to basically be queued. Once Chris and Emily have got past the VOM, those two need to be joining in. Does that make sense? Three, two, one, go! Let's go, Mackay. Let's go. Good. Hands down. 
International Fair. It's an hour and 30 minutes to go until the actual performance. And my heart is beating non stop. service can only bring you so far. You recover to enjoy life, to be part of that massive community, put out a message of resilience and hope. That was the fix I needed. My mum, she always said to me when I was younger, you will definitely find a place where you fit one day. And I thought that was my job, but I actually think it's the theatre. When I'm on the stage, it's the first time that I have ever done something that's just solely for me. On the same year that my son Harry went into care, this is the same year that we lost my mum. So that year just broke all of us. But I would honestly say, being on the stage, I feel like I've actually started to heal. I feel like I'm part of some very big, huge revolution. Seriously. <laughs> just going all out there is okay to fail. This is just okay to live through life. And I'm part of the revolution. I feel special. I really do feel special. I do. You meet a lot of people in your life, but you will find eventually those people that you really connect with. The way my mind's shaped now, it's, it feels almost like, not indestructible, but like, the future, yeah, the future I want for myself is like, it's bright, it's huge bright. bright. Like, I, I'm, I want to be the best. Yeah, but not not even the best, but I like I just want to be top tier and I want these men to be top tier with me. Top tier. And it's a full circle moment because I remember being on like the 243 which crosses Waterloo Bridge and you can see the National Theatre mm. and always thinking that I'm gonna perform there one day. So yeah. Yeah, come inside. on. You're there it's now, coming bro. into reality. <laughs> yeah. Trust. Yeah. Like inside the National Theatre. Inside. On the Olivier stage, the Olivier. which just happens to be the biggest stage inside. in the National Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> We're all still, and I'm definitely in that phase still of just going, I can't believe we did it. We did it. Where's the go? Oh, where do you think you're going? Nowhere but here. There's nowhere but here. 